Hi folks, I'm Scott Morthwick. This is part four now of my songwriter series when I'm taking the basic idea of a song and fleshing it out into a, a fully fledged song and performance. Now, since the last time um, I recorded this piece, and if you've not seen that, uh, by all means check that out. I'll link it in the description below. I've switched from acoustic to electric, um, mainly because I do envisage this as being more of a rock song. It will have acoustic elements in it, but we'll come back to that when we actually start to flesh out the arrangement of the song. But for the time being, I wanted to get more of a feel of what the song is going to be like. It's going to help me when I come to finalising the lyrics, which we'll look at in the next video in the series. But for now, um, I've made a few changes. One of the major ones is settling for the time being on a tempo for the song. I think the first time I recorded it, it was about 144 beats per minute. The most recent uh, acoustic recording that I did, I think it was around about 164, 165. I've gone for a happy medium, um, and that little piece there that uh, I recorded was at 154. It sounds about right. It's got... Um, a kind of menacing quality about it but also it, it moves along at a reasonable pace so that uh, the song doesn't end up too long. Apart from that um, a few transitions that I changed slightly I think in the last uh, video I was doing a piece that um, went along <laughs> Which, you know, I kind of like, it's a little bit flashy, but uh, I think it was more or less repeating one of the themes uh, in the chorus. So it, that piece be was becoming longer and longer and it just didn't seem to fit with, again, with the flow of the song. So that's been dropped for now. It may be added as a second guitar part. I haven't quite decided that yet, but uh, it's on the back burner just in case. Um, the other thing that I've done, uh, the transition from the verse into the chorus, which was this piece here. <laughs> No, it wasn't. <laughs> Pick any chord you like. And I think when I originally played that, it was just staying, staying, um, changing from the D to the E each time. Um, but I felt that it probably worked a little bit better if I was dropping down to the to the G as I did later on in the in the the previous recording. So it goes more along the lines of. And then just holding on to that, uh, holding on to that G become, before coming back to the to, to the A probably makes a little bit more sense. So I am speaking in whole whole tones. Um, those of you who've been watching this will realise that the the guitar is tuned down uh, half a step. So we're talking A flat, G flat. Um, and one other thing that I did was um, because I've I've removed this uh, the the more kind of flourishy. <laughs> More, that more flourishy bit. I'm just um, into the the chorus part and straight into the the lower transition. So you would just go from Okay, so those are the major changes. Uh, we're going to jump across to uh, GarageBand now, where I've set up a new project folder so that I can get down these ideas, look at the, the structure as it stands, um, and then maybe change things around so that we can begin starting on uh, the, the lyrics for this. It does have, I have made a start, I should 
point out and uh, the song does have a title but we will approach that in the next video okay so we're just going to jump into GarageBand quickly I will show you how I set this uh, project up I'm aware a lot of you use GarageBand so you're familiar with this but we'll just go and do this go into GarageBand create song we're going to use the auto drummer here so we'll just select the acoustic drums and this is kind of a simple rock track so we'll go for Logan here I think now what I tend to do at this point is set up sections for the song it just makes things a little bit easier uh, later rather than making one section 150 bars long or whatever so we'll just go into the song sections and add as many of these as we can you can actually add 26 obviously if your song is longer you can make each of those bars a little bit longer and then split them down as you wish but for the time being we're just going to set it up quickly like this just as many as we like right and while we're here um, it is worthwhile noting that because this is just going to be a scratch track uh, to, to get some ideas oh yes make sure you press all sections so that you don't end up zooming in on a, on a single bar right just remove the fills there we don't really need that uh, this song does fit into that sort of eight bar structure reasonably well but uh, there are going to be one or two that are a little bit longer so we prefer just to to leave it like that so we don't end up with a, a random fill where we don't really want one while we're trying to record can be a little bit distracting okay so that's it uh, for the drummer while we're in here just uh, check settings and set that tempo i'd set 154 so there we go and that's just done for the drummer and the tempo now i'm using the nembrini mrh810 amplifier simulator so for that we want to make sure that uh, we have the correct input there um, i did a brief video on that so the trick here is to use the audio recorder take the instrument input go to fun and select a clean microphone and you can then add your uh, then add your, your Nembrini amplifier simulator there. Now, oh yes, double check that you've got your, your input set correctly so that you've got the, the instrument rather than the, the microphone coming in. Now in true old fashioned British television style, there is one I prepared earlier. So we're going to scrap this little project just now. And we'll jump into the one that I uh, have already started working on. Now, as you can see, I've been working a little bit on the drums and the arrangement. There's a couple of guitar tracks in there. I actually added a second guitar track. Um, I'll just play that for you very quickly so you can get a feel for possibly the way the arrangement's going to go. find this quite a useful way to work on a song particularly a song when you don't necessarily have the structure exactly the way that you might want it and you don't have all the the lyrics organized the advantage of doing this in this way creating this effectively scratch recording or demo recording is you can split pieces up move them around if you decide that a particular piece is too long or you want to to move something to a different area to see how that's going to f sound with the lyrics that you're developing very easy to do it's one of the great advantages i think of digital recording for the time being though thank you very much for watching and i will see you again another time